In this video, I'll go over how to use Synology's Migration Assistant to migrate data from one Synology NAS to another. This method works best if you would like to migrate all of your data, packages, and system configuration from the source Synology NAS to a brand new Synology NAS set up with new drives. Before starting the migration process, Synology recommends that you back up certain data first, which is listed in this table here. I'll also link to the article where I pulled this table in the description below. You'll also want to ensure that both Synology NAS devices are connected to the same network and that the network is stable and fast for the speediest migration possible. On the source NAS, the DSM version must be DSM 6.0 or above, while on the destination NAS, the DSM version must be DSM 6.2.2 or above as of the recording of this video. In addition, the DSM version on the destination NAS must be the same as or newer than the version on the source NAS. In the example I go through in this video, both devices are at DSM version 7.1-42661 update 4. Also, on the destination NAS, a storage pool needs to be set up with the total capacity being larger than the total capacity of all volumes on the source NAS. For your reference, I'll leave a link to a Synology knowledge base article on how to create storage pools, as well as a link to my video that covers creating storage pools and volumes with Storage Manager in the description below. Lastly, I'll leave a link to this article listed here on screen that provides additional details on what needs to be in place before starting up the migration process in the description below as well. Have a look at the environment section for those details. Once all the prerequisites are in place, from the destination Synology NAS, I'll bring up Package Center, then search for and install the Migration Assistant. This Install Migration Assistant window pops up where it confirms with you that the NAS you are currently on is indeed the destination Synology NAS. It is for me, so I'll click on the checkbox to confirm, then click Next. I'll click Done on this Confirm Settings window, and in a few seconds, the Migration Assistant package should be installed. Next, I'll open Migration Assistant to start up the Migration Wizard. This Welcome to Migration Wizard window pops up where it provides details on what will be migrated to the new Synology NAS. This includes all services and data along with system configuration, but not any of the licenses that you may have installed. To learn more about the limitations of Migration Assistant and what is non-migratable, check out the links provided by Synology from this window here, which I'll also link to in the description below. Now I'll click Next, and from this Select the Source Device window, I'll enter in the IP address, username, and password for the Source Synology NAS. I'll click Next once again, and because I have two-factor authentication set up on the Source NAS, I'll need to enter in a six-digit one-time password to continue, then I'll click Submit. On this initial system check window, I see a few notices on issues that were found in my setup which I'll make note of, then I'll click Next to proceed. I'll click Done on this Confirm Settings window and continue on this Confirmation pop-up window, which provides details on what will happen on both the source device and the local destination device. Lastly, I'll enter in my password for the local device, then click Submit to start up the migration process. At this point, I'll stop recording and wait until the data has been migrated to proceed on to the next step with Migration Assistant. I'm back, and at this point, the Migration Assistant would like to temporarily stop all services on the source NAS to check for data consistency between the devices, resync any new changes, and once that's done, restart the destination NAS to terminate data syncing between the two devices. We are also prompted on how to handle the services on the source device after the migration is completed. The options are to either keep all services running if you plan to use the source NAS 
or disable all file services and packages, which makes use of the destination NAS immediately. In my case, either option would have been fine, so I left the Keep All Services Running option selected and clicked Restart Now. At this point, the data consistency check starts up and there is another wait, so I'll stop the recording again until this step is completed. I'm back after the reboot of the destination NAS, and I'm at the DSM login prompt where I'll log in with the administrator account that was migrated from the source NAS. Once logged in, Migration Assistant automatically starts, and at this point, everything is done except for the final manual configuration steps needed to start using the services that were transferred to the destination NAS. I'll click on the Details button, which provides a list of actions that need to take place to get all of the services running properly. I'll click on the Learn More link next to the Block the Connection listing, which brings up this web page that covers all of the steps on what needs to be done after migrating via the Migration Assistant, and I'll refer to this page to complete the manual setup steps. I'll also leave a link to this page in the description below as well. In my case, the manual steps I needed to do were disable DDNS and switch over to the second Ethernet port on the source device to block any connections to the source Synology NAS. Then from the destination NAS, I reconnected my Synology account, which I did from the Synology account control panel. I had to reset up two-factor authentication by relinking the secure key using Touch ID on my MacBook and link up the NAS with a secure sign-in app for use with one-time passwords. Reconfigure Virtual Machine Manager by recreating a VM storage location and importing the virtual machines and images that were imported from the source NAS, along with linking the virtual machine that was imported to the default VM network. I needed to bring up the VPN server package and select the network interface used on the destination NAS. Change the server name to the name used by the source NAS, along with changing the IP address to that of the source NAS as well. Lastly, I re-enabled DDNS and transferred the DDNS hostname that I set up using Synology as the DDNS provider to the destination NAS. At this point, everything that was running on the source NAS is now running on the destination NAS, so I was able to shut down the source NAS and start using the services and data migrated to the destination NAS. Migrating between Synology NAS devices can be tricky, particularly because each NAS is set up differently, so make sure to check out the links provided in the description below, as well as this video on creating storage pools and volumes. Lastly, consider supporting my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.